first video in this series, I talked about kind of overall groups and Outlook, Yammer, Microsoft Teams, and SharePoint sites. In this video, I'm going to dive deep on the pros and cons on groups and Outlook. Now, groups and Outlook has been around since about 2015, where the Exchange to team took it upon ourselves to kind of reinvent distribution lists. Distribution lists have been around in Exchange for a long time. It saved you kind of when you're creating emails that communicate with multiple people, having to remember to cover them all and make sure they're in the two line and the C line and so forth. Having the ability to kind of put in a group name in the two or CC or even BCC and then manage who's in those particular groups made it really easy to distribute and make sure you're not missing people when you're sending out email communications. The groups in Outlook took that a step further and said, okay, well, we're going to allow you to have this kind of container that lives inside of Outlook on Windows and Outlook in the web browser and allow me to see all the groups I've created couldn't really do this with distribution list. It would come up in the address book, but there was no real way of seeing all the emails that have been sent to that particular distribution list, especially if you'd left the organization and come back, or maybe you've changed teams, or you've changed roles where now this distribution group was relevant to you now. And so having a groups and outlook area where all that communication is stored, the replies are captured, and keeping it inside of email and outlook was a really compelling thing. Now, they were smart in the sense that they then bolted this back into Active Directory groups. So when you create a group in Outlook, really you're managing the membership of those groups inside of Azure Active Directory. And then in addition to that, uh, they snap in the ability to have a shared exchange calendar for that group and a OneDrive for Business place to put files. And so there was a real kind of benefit to having this kind of one central way for your team to collaborate and communicate in an email-centric way. Now, each group in Outlook gets its own email address. So if all, people kind of don't want to kind of engage in the OneDrive for Business part of it or the um, exchange and plans and OneNote part, they really don't have to. They can continue just using the DL name as they would have done in their old way of using distribution lists. But this really kind of gives distribution lists superpowers and gives them a lot more things they can do with Inside Office 365 to collaborate as a team. Now, this is a great benefit for organizations that are kind of comfortable with email and don't really want to go into those modern worlds of different collaboration tools that I'll talk about in the other videos. Some of the other things I've added which are really neat is this notion of connectors. So um, if you think about it in the sense of services might be happening outside where we have a CRM system with customers being registered or opportunities being recognized by a salesperson and they want to rather than just kind of send an email that says this opportunity is now available in CRM, they can actually kind of see that automatically being posted into that distribution list. And then when that's posted, they can respond like they would a normal email thread. And this allows lots of different services to be connected into that groups in Outlook. For instance, not just a CRM scenario, but imagine you're in marketing and you're following particular hashtags on Twitter. You can get a summary email automatically connected into your groups in Outlook for particular height. Hyperfish hashtags, for instance, that allows me then to have those conversations with the rest of the people who are interested in marketing across my organization. Now, some of the limitations of groups in Outlook, it seemed to be kind of, they pulled off the gas a little bit, particularly on groups in Outlook. They never really got round to the Mac client version of groups in Outlook, which, yes, I know most Microsoft organizations are very Windows-centric, and they're using Outlook on sort of Windows. But, for instance, myself personally, I'm a Mac user. I'm using Office on a Mac and you don't get that functionality of groups in Outlook. You also, there's no real way to see a list of all the groups that are available to you that you could go and join. There is this notion of public groups in groups in Outlook, which allows you to kind of see what special interest groups may exist inside your company, much like you used to do when you joined distribution lists for special areas in your org. Now, there is no way of doing that other than to be inside of Outlook and click the uh, new group or join group, but it's kind of hidden away in the tree. There's not like a nice kind of view that some of the other collaboration products on the market have. So that seems to be something they've missed. There are some add-on capabilities that companies sell that kind of fix this problem. But yeah, it seems a bit of a miss that it's not as easily to kind of search and discover groups in Outlook in that way. And then also the big limitation, I think, kind of the stopper gapper is, is that if customers are familiar with SharePoint document libraries, the file kind of management that you get within groups in Outlook isn't quite as sophisticated as SharePoint. Um, it's OneDrive for business, which means you can sync that container of documents that you're collaborating on with that group, but you don't get things like um, 
very obviously versioning, metadata, workflow integration, um, list document views, for instance, um, and content types, because it's the OneDrive for Business view of document management. So if you need something more fully fledged, uh, maybe you're working on HR policy documents and you need to have that level of versioning and metadata shown in that document view inside your groups and outlook, you really need to start looking at maybe SharePoint document libraries instead of the OneDrive for Business. So that's one kind of gotcha that we see we see in there. And then the other thing with groups and outlook that comes up is if you were a distribution list person and you spin up a new group in Outlook, um, you're not just getting an email distribution list anymore. You are getting OneNote, Planner, you're getting OneDrive for Business, and there's a bunch of other bits and pieces that will get lit up, and I'm sure there'll be more over time. There's no way right now to granularly say, when I create this group in Outlook, just give me the emails. I don't want OneDrive for Business, I don't want a OneNote, because I already have those things in other locations within inside of Office 365. And so that's a big kind of uh, gap I'm seeing in terms of people adopting groups in Outlook. And I'm sure those governance controls and bells and whistles are coming, but um, it has been you know over a year now and we've not seen those roll out in the product. So definitely keep an eye on that. Um, Christoph Feisinger is definitely the person on the internet to kind of keep an eye on from a public side. He's the one that's answering all of those questions. So there's some great ways to get started with groups in Outlook. I'll put some links down in the show notes on the YouTube page here, and also um, we'll tweet a few things out on the Hyperfish uh, Twitter handle as well. If you've got any feedback, please put it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you on what you think about groups in Outlook within Office 365.